What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage coming to you live. I am finally home and broadcasting out of my corporate headquarters here in Portland. Uh, and I am pumped because I've got my buddy and amazing mortgage leader, Hunter Marquardt. What's up, Hunter? How are you, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Uh, so I, I asked Hunter to jump on the call this week because I read his Sunday thoughts like I do every Sunday. I'm one of the people blessed enough to be on your mailing list. So thank you for that, Hunter. Thanks for reading, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's it's always good. You know, the one thing I always get when I read it is I it makes me think. It makes me reflect. I almost always relate. And then I'm, I'm always um, impressed by your um, vulnerability and transparency. So I always like the dude just, you know, calls it out, calls himself out. So yeah. I, I thought it was a good message that a lot of people in the mortgage coach community could relate to right now. So let's, let's do a, a zoom version of that, that, that thought and see where it takes us. You cool with okay. that, bro? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to literally just read my Sunday thoughts, but I didn't know, want it, you to say again. I didn't want you to just read it. Like, okay, cool. Like, let's just um, talk about it. Just thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the context, Dave is, uh, you know, I think for, for me personally, I mean, not to give everyone my health background, but I, I, I had COVID in late December and it never went away. I still right now, I can't taste, I can't smell. Um, I've got these freaking, this is embarrassing. I didn't, I didn't talk about this, but I mean, I got nose polyps that I got to get removed in a few weeks. Like, so, you know, I, I wake up every morning, literally for the last 90 days, like I have a massive head cold. Um, and it's just completely, it, it derailed me up until, you know, about a week and a half ago when I decided to, um, kind of take everything back. And I think the way that I feel, um, taken into account with what is happening in our industry as a whole with, you know, I don't think things are as bad as people think they are. Uh, Dave just, you, I mean, obviously you just had me listen to this uh, video with Jeremy, who I, who I love just on, you got to keep perspective on what the numbers are, but it does feel like we've been, um, you know, kicked in the head a little bit with rates moving up a couple of percentage points, inventory being down, we had the mindset for the last couple of years that loans were just going to fall out of the sky um, and that we would pick and choose every, every client that we wanted to deal with. And I think people are now sitting there going, um, you know, we need to, we need to make everything we can with every opportunity that we get. So the, the, the point is, I, I think there's a lot of people, uh, including me that have been just in the position of in the last few months when the news got sour, um, complacent. I think sometimes people, when, when everything changes, you people can have a tendency to freeze. And, you know, the story that I brought up, some, a story that I love is the concept of, you know, the cow and the buffalo. And, you know, the idea is with a cow, when a storm comes, the cow has a tendency to try to run away from the storm. And in doing so, the storm just hovers over them the entire time until they get sick and, and die. Whereas the buffalo, when a buffalo sees a storm coming, they literally run straight into the storm. Um, they get whacked quickly, and then they end up on the other side faster than other, uh, other well, than, the, than a cow. So, um, you know, I just took that into context in my own life and, you know, said, I mean, for, you know, in business, it's it literally, the amount of prospecting that I'm doing um, in my own personal life, it's getting back to my morning routines. And, and, you know, just this morning, I, I, you know, for the first time this year, I, I, I do this, you know, I go for a run. It's hard for me to run right now because I'm super congested and whatever. Um, but I do a plunge pool in my, in my pool. That's super, super cold. And I did that again for the first time this year and I'm already feeling better in doing so. So it's just, you know, the, the I think all of us need, uh, I mean, you're, you know, the, the, the mortgage coach community, I mean, you use this and something I love you for is, um, you know, it's a, it's an audience and a team and a group uh, of people that, that want to be better. And I mean, I think it starts with wanting to be better with, with mortgages, but um, it's really being better uh, in life. And we all, I think, help each other rise up when we're feeling like crap. And I was feeling like crap, which is why I um, you know, glad I had the peace of mind to, to think about that example and, um, you know, put it into my own life. 
Well, I, I loved the cow and the buffalo analogy, and I, I thought it was important for the, you know, the community, just a good reminder, do you want to be a cow or do you want to be a buffalo? And I know I want to be the buffalo, and, and I know I've been both. You yeah, know? So, that's, the, that's the thing, Dave. I mean, it's like we've, we've all been both. It's a question of, you know, where are I, I just think there's a lot of people that are buffaloes that are cows right now, right? And, right. and it's, it's a question. It's okay that you, you're a cow. Um, but you want to get back to the Buffalo stance as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Well, a couple of thoughts that were going through my head when I was reading it and reflecting and, you know, and I, I have been both around different things. And I don't know if you've ever read the book by um, Trevor Moad, call it takes what it takes. And it's all about, do you know who Trevor Moad is? I, yeah, book? absolutely. I, I haven't read the book. I've heard of it. Okay. So, so he's, well, he passed last year, but yep. he from cancer, but he, he is one of the most accomplished mindset um, coaches on planet earth. And, uh, you know, was, was the mindset coach for Alabama uh, for a number of years. I mean, I could go on with his resume, you know, um, Russell Wilson. Neutral thinking, right? Yeah. Think neutral. Yep. Yep. But, but there's this one other um, lesson, you know, there's a lot of micro lessons in that book. And, you know, the big lesson is get to neutral. That's where you get in the zone. Yeah. But, he he tells this story of when he was coaching at um, I'm pretty sure it was Alabama, and the one thing they wanted to work on is what the players um, ate. You know, let's cut fast food out for a season, and what they said out loud. And and he tells this whole story and metaphor around what you say out loud amplifies whatever that emotion is ten times, and no negative shit out loud. Yeah. Like like don't say anything negative during practice and because it amplifies it by, right. by seven X. And so I started thinking like, what are the cow behaviors? What are the Buffalo behaviors? And I, I just want to remind everybody in the mortgage coach community. And it also plays off of the four agreements. You know, we can't help, well, we can control what we think, but we, you know, we're going to have some negative thoughts. We're human beings, yeah. but, but we have a lot more control about what we say out loud and I just started thinking about, you know what, one of the things I'm really going to be more intentional about after reading that is just not saying negative things out loud. Like, even if they're going through my head, just zip what I'm going to bring to the world, what I'm going to bring in my leadership role is, is just pure, you know, talk about the positive things. Yeah. Well, he even, I mean, I heard him on a podcast, so I think Ed Milet, and he brought up the example. Of, By the way, that was a great podcast. Yeah. And, and, and you know, he talked about like the difference of it's OK to have a negative thought, but it's another thing to verbalize it. And correct. I think it's at least 10 X. I mean, I thought it was like 40. It was some crazy number. But, you know, he talked about the guy at the um, uh, in the World Series. He literally like during a press conference before the game started, he said, the only thing that could ruin my life is, is if I was playing first base and the ball rolled through my legs. And it literally, it, it, happened. it happened, you know, I mean, like that, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, it's crazy. So um, yeah, I, I agree with you hundred percent. You got to be careful with what, you know, what we put in our head and what words come out of it. Yeah, no, no doubt. And by the way, guys, I did interview him. There's a, I'll put a link down below. And that Ed Milet interview was pure gold. I actually listened to, to that interview the week before I interviewed him. So that was my prep for the interview. You had the, you had the opportunity to interview him. Yeah, yeah, it's in the YouTube Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, it's a it's a cool 20, 30 minute interview. The guy was amazing. Uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah. All right. So what you're you're a leader, you're yeah. doing loans. And by the way, let's give context to everyone. I mean, you're you're not just a top producing loan officer. What kind of volume did you do last year? Well, last year I was 290 million. So, so crazy amounts of business. So what do you think you're going to do this year? What are you on track for? A couple hundred million. I would be happy with a couple hundred million right now. So, but Still, it's, getting, I mean, I will, it's, get, it's getting better. You know, I mean, it's getting better right now. The first quarter was rough and we're starting to get more contracts right now. Okay. So, so let's leave it with that. Cause yep. so a baller doing lots of volume. So I want you to put your sales leaders hat on right now. And I want to pretend like the next five minutes is you're coming in as a guest in a sales meeting. You know, we're putting on a sales meeting. I'm a branch manager putting on a sales meeting. You know, what would be five minutes of advice that you would give folks? And if you just want to kind of replay the Buffalo, you know, be the Buffalo, go whatever you want. But I just want to hear five minutes of hunters, a guest in a sales meeting, delivering a message to loan officers right now. What would, what would you do? 
Well, I would say, uh, I mean, I would say a couple of things. One is, you know, the other part of my Sunday thoughts was my team and I are kind of recalibrating on, we're, we're simplifying our message. We do, I think we do a lot of the right things m most of the time. I mean, there are, I believe in team. I believe in taking care of your people, take care of your people. You take care of your business partners, take care of your business partners, your clients get referred more heavily. Um, so it's a, it's, there's a message there for me about, just doing the right thing. The message, my external message to my own team, which includes loan officers, is do the right thing. My internal message uh, to simplify everything is earn your keep, which really starts with me above and beyond everybody else. So it's like, what am I doing to earn my keep? Um, and that's, I mean, there's a lot of different things that go into it. I think right now it's not, we're talking about having negative thoughts out loud. You know, you're an asset or a liability to all your business partners and all your clients all the time, every conversation you have. So if you're having a conversation with a business partner, a realtor, and you're bitching about the market and you're bitching about interest rates and you're spewing this, you know, lava of crap on them, um, that's not being an asset to your business partner. So I think we, you know, for one, I would just say have it in your head before every phone call that you make. You know, if you're going to do, you know, we call it sometimes call it power hour. You're calling. I called 30 realtors before this because uh, I'm doing an appraisal. I'm, I'm interviewing an appraiser on, on Friday and I was just reaching out to everybody to get them hopefully fired up for that Friday meeting to have them gain knowledge, be better at their jobs. Um, I think that's what we have to do above and beyond everything else. Um, you know, Dave, I just have to tell a quick story, too. Like this just happened today where I gave, I gave an opportunity, it's, you know, any lender knows you don't get that many opportunities to give referrals to business partners and this great giant team that I work with. I gave one of their newer people a opportunity, which I was, I thought the person would be super fired up to get. Turns out he was, it, he wasn't as excited about it and asked if we could just give it to someone else on the team. I give it to someone else on the team and the guy um, shows the property. He also wasn't overly excited about it, by the way. Um, and then they show the property once and end up in contract at 900,000 um, bucks. When I reverse the lens on how that whole experience felt for me, it's about whether or not our business partners know that we have gratitude for the opportunities that they're providing me. So I would be, for all of us, we need to be thinking right now, if you're on the other end of, of a referral, if you're on the other, like someone goes into contract, how excited are you for them? Someone gives you an opportunity. How, do they feel how much you appreciate it? That's the stuff that makes people come back to you. You obviously, you need to execute. You need to do your job really well. But I think right now it's, a, it's literally just a reflection of your level of gratitude. I talk about it all the time. A, a, a realtor is handing their livelihood to you on a silver platter. And it's a question of what we choose to do with it. Um, for me being on this end of it, I don't want to, I mean, I really like these two folks, so I hope this doesn't come back to them, but the truth is I would be less excited to give them an opportunity again because of their level of excitement for the opportunity that I gave them. So when I reverse the lens and I'm closing 20 to 50 loans a month, I'm thinking to myself, do those people know how much I care? Do I care? Um, am I showing that I care? Are my actions, everything in alignment with that? or not. Um, and I just, I think it's super important. Like me earning my keep is having people understand how excited I am to be a part of this whole opportunity. So um, that's, I, I would just say, if I was doing a single sales call right now, it would be bring energy to everything that you're doing right now, because there's so, there's a lot of ways to not be able to differentiate yourself right now, your energy, uh, mortgage coach, you know, I mean, all like you got to think about the things that do differentiate you and then exploit those. Yeah. And I just looked at your numbers, you and your team have done 81 total cost analysis in the last 30 days. So, you know, there's, and, and again, you've been doing that for a long time. Yep. So just let's summarize for a sales meeting. And then if you think of another closing thought, bring it on, but I want to summarize a few things. Cause I remember a couple of weeks ago, you called me because you were trying to make a hundred calls in a single day. Yeah. And, and, and so I want everyone to, to think about this Hunter, you know, I didn't know when he called me that he was suffering from long haul COVID, but the dude is suffering from, you know, some serious long haul COVID. He's suffering from the same thing. Every other loan officer is, which is a, 
you know, our product just got worse, you know, two, two points more expensive is not a loan officer's dream right. uh, and, and inventory. So now those are problems, but guys, we got to be the solution providers. I want to, I want to show something on my screen. This is a quote I've been saying over and over and over in every sales meeting I get on, but, but guys, we're in a market where we need to sell the problems we solve, not the product we make because our product has gotten worse. Like when rates were in the twos, you could get away with selling a product. It was a pretty sexy, easy to sell product. Yeah. But but when when rates, you know, when the problems are appraisal gap, uh, the problem is people sitting on the fence because they're scared, they're concerned, they have uncertainty. Like guys, it's time to upgrade our sales fitness. Tell me if you agree with this. I think that the mortgage industry and loan officers if we were looking at sales fitness, like we're the most out of shape we've been totally. in a decade. Yeah, like, like I mean, we're like, it's flashback. Like we're out of shape. And yeah. so I think it's sales fitness is the name of the game. Yeah. And that means, you know, I, I challenge everyone listening to this, you know, making a hundred calls a day is not sustainable, but could you over the next week have a day where you try to make a hundred calls? I guarantee you'd get some leads, some confidence and some attitude. Could you, for a week, control your complaining? Uh, and, and remember, guys, that's not only what you say out loud. Like the most dangerous conversation of all is the one that you have with yourself. So, so really think about controlling that complaining. Uh, do your TCAs. If, you, if you're not doing a total cost analysis every single day, you're not optimizing your success or your confidence. Just, Dave, uh, I got to stop you on that, especially right now with with what's happening with interest rates. I think people think that if you, like, if you hide, people aren't going to like, if you quoted someone 3% and now you're quoting them 5%, they're going to go shopping, right? If you proactively provide a TCA, you give people the numbers ahead of time to say, Hey, look, I just wanted to proactively reach out to you. So we don't shock you. You're still completely fine. Sometimes they're not, but you're still completely fine. I just wanted to give you this Intel so you could see it. They go into contract. They're not. They're. I mean, we found it. I mean, from experience, they're not shopping. I mean, it's they. They shop when they were expecting three and a half, and you're telling them five. So, I mean, in regards to the TCA, I mean, I, I just I can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, I think I I did a call with Jeremy a week ago, and he said I'm going back. Or maybe it was two weeks ago, um, but you got to go back and requalify everyone and update everybody's TCA. Sure. So, so your TB, your your you know, um, um, your pre-approval funnel. Yep. Your TBD funnel, guys, you got to get out there and reset expectations with everyone and show them what it would look like if they wait. So when you're doing that, you're updating it, you know, in the last column show. And what, what do you think is going to happen to rates? Oh, it might go up a little more. Put that in the TCA. Oh, what do you think is happening to values? Oh, they're going up more. Like create some not artificial urgency. Make sure you're using their assumptions but let them see that like guys, it, it could get worse. So if you're in the market, get a house. Uh, all right. So any closing thoughts before we wrap this up? Well, no, I love what you said about, I mean, you know, instead of raining cheeseburgers, it's been raining loans for the last couple of years. We need to, it's not, it's not the case anymore. So we do need to get back in shape. You need to tighten, got to tighten everything that you're, you're good at. And so, um, I mean, I, I would just say the last, like in the last week in my thought process, even today, like I'm just looking forward to, you know, the hundred phone calls. It was, I just wanted to see if I could do it. I don't, I'm not the sale. There are people that love doing that kind of stuff and making 50 to hundred calls a day, whatever. It's not me. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I did find it was less like just bang, 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 bang. And more me realizing how many people I actually care about that I have not talked to in a long time. Um, so that was the cool thing about that. But in general, I just think, you know, momentum creates momentum and we just have to get like, we have to be creating momentum right now, not going backwards. So, well, I'm going to title this when I promote it on our YouTube channel, you know, be the Buffalo with Hunter Marquardt. So, so guys, I want everyone to, to think about that, you know, um, maybe every hour of the day, I'm going to be in the Buffalo, I'm going to be in the cow, Yeah. Uh, start thinking about what are the behaviors of the cow, like, like part of emotional IQ is being able to name your emotion, you know, if you can name it, you can tame it, and, and so start thinking about like, well, what's a Buffalo behavior, what's a cow behavior as a mortgage professional, and, 
guys, it's time to be the Buffalo man, run towards the storm, run towards the tough conversations and uh, crush it. All right, bro. Well, I think we're good. Anything else you want to say before we wrap? No, I mean, I just, I always appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely the time right now to be the Buffalo. So um, I'll be thinking about it. I agree with you hundred percent, Dave, if I could, if I could be thinking about the Buffalo, you know, Buffalo cow mentality in every decision I'm making right now, uh, I'll be better for it. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for starting that conversation. Thank you for the Sunday thought. Are you still accepting folks if they wanted to oh, get of course. on your list? Yeah. How, how does someone get on the Sunday thoughts from Hunter? Um, just email me. I mean, just email, you know, Bridget, uh, she looks at my emails too, but it's just hunter at rpm hyphen mtg.com. Um, and we'll, we'll put you on the list. I've tried to be automated, but it's like, it, it, it hits more spam filters and it just, this just works for me, the format that it's in. So, and actually there's, I mean, I think you saw it, a friend of mine surprised me with doing sundaythoughts.com. So if you go to sundaythoughts.com, um, they're there as well. So, but uh, yeah, I would love to add people to the list. Go to sundaythoughts.com. Let's not blow up Hunter's inbox. He's a, he's a, a busy mortgage leader and uh, Hunter, super grateful for you, brother. If you guys got value from this, give it a like, share it with your mortgage friends. Uh, if this is on social media, when you're checking it out and there's some comments down below, let us know what you think the Buffalo behaviors are. I know one of them is a TCA a day. I know cold calling realtors, Jeremy Forcier style. Listen to that call I did with Jeremy last week and his killer script for calling realtors. That's, that's Buffalo behavior. Um, let us know what other Buffalo behaviors are. Take care, everybody. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thank you, Hunter. Thanks, Dave.